Today we're going to be talking about how you can use native plants in your own backyard. As you may know, over the past few decades, many insect and bird populations have been declining here in the U.S. Many times, supporting our native wildlife and ecosystems can seem like a daunting project. So we're going to break this down into a couple simple steps. We're going to first go over trees, then shrub, and then perennials. And over each one, we're going to break down the name, common varieties that you can find, its zones, some of its growth habits, and any of its characteristics. If you want to learn more about native plants we did a whole video talking about an, an introduction to what are native plants so if you want to learn things such as what is a plant ecotype and how you can find native plants and seeds in, in your region go watch this video it'll be up here in the corner all about native plants and sure to watch it after you watch this video this is zach from garden theory now let's go talk about some native trees you can use in your landscapes First one we're going to talk about is one of my favorite, service berries. There's many different varieties of service berries, some living in the eastern half of the U.S. and some over the western half. But here in Arkansas, uh, a common one that we see is a common service berry. Service berries here are very easy to see in the spring, usually from around this time in April. They all have beautiful white flowers that cover the entirety of the tree. And then later, by May, they'll be full of these very black, kind of cherry-looking fruit. And the flavor is very similar to cherry. Last year, I actually took some because our apartment we used to live in had a row of cherry trees on the road and I took some of them and made some jam out of them but they're very good to eat raw right off of the trees if you can get them before the birds do but they're a really delicious fruit so it can add something that you can forage in your own backyard while providing that beautiful color in the spring and you can expect a service berry to get between 15 to 25 foot tall and wide next up is everyone's favorite dogwood dogwoods are, again like service berry typically their native range is in the eastern half of the United States. And dogwoods, generally they tend to be zone four through nine. So you probably already know they have beautiful, typically white flowers, but some varieties can come in pink and even red. Generally flowering anytime, depending on the variety, from as early as March to as late as June. Dogwoods are a great one to plant in groupings that have that beautiful cluster of white flowers, uh, but they also work very well as an understory tree if you have a lot of mature trees on your site. Our next tree we're gonna talk about is Eastern Red red buds typically like the other ones zone four through nine these ones typically will be a little bit larger between 20 to 30 feet tall red buds work very well as the spring focal point tree with their beautiful pink flowers red buds and dogwoods both can sometimes be a little finicky with their branch growth but generally red buds are pretty good at self pruning red buds like dogwoods also work well as an understory tree next up is one of my personal favorites american hollies american hollies are very good uh, here in arkansas they grow from zones five to nine depending on how old they can be they can get as tall as 40 to 50 feet tall and generally between 15 and 30 feet wide. They're a very good evergreen tree that can work well in a mass planting as well as for like a privacy screen. You do need a male and female plant with American hollies for them to produce berries so that's something to keep in mind but they can take part shade to full sun. But this is a great tree and those red berries on them help to provide food for birds in the winter. Another one of my personal favorite tulip trees. Tulip trees are a really cool tree called tulip poplar trees. They grow from zones four to nine and these ones are very large deciduous trees upwards of 70 to 90 feet tall and 30 to 50 feet wide. They have these beautiful tulip shaped flowers. That's where they get their name from. And they usually bloom in the late spring from May to June. So these are a really beautiful tree to have on your site. Moving on to shrubs. And from this point on, these native plants I have listed, I listed them down for their more practical uses in your landscape. Something that's gonna be not only something native, but is showy as well. And it's gonna be presentable. It's not gonna to be too much of a hassle asshole to take care of. So our first shrub that we're going to talk about is Virginia Sweet Spire. This, this one's a pretty cool shrub, kind of on the medium size, three to six feet tall and wide. It blooms in the spring with these really cool kind of bottle brush looking white to pink flowers and its native habitat it grows in swampy areas and so they make a really good foundation planting. Probably one of the most fascinating ones on this list is the American Beauty Berry from zones 6b to 10. Beauty Berry is a really cool another kind of medium size three to eight feet tall and three to six feet 
wide and they will bloom in the summer and then pr produce these groupings of clusters of purple berries along their stem I and mean, these are a really cool one you can plant together in a mass or groupings and their purple berries really do stick out almost as if they were flowers one of my personal favorite shrubs are called witch hazels depending on which variety you get they either bloom in the late fall to early winter and i'm talking like january to march so these guys will bloom even while it's snowing Another really cool spring bloomer, Father Gilla, zones five to eight on this one. And this is kind of a smaller shrub from three to five feet tall and wide. And they bloom these really cool bottle brush white flowers that smell like honeydew. One of my favorite native grasses is little blue stem. And these guys grow from zones three to nine. Uh, typically they're about three feet tall, so it's a bit of a shorter grass. Um, and they create these really cool kind of bluish purple hue to them especially during the late season so it's a really cool grass that adds a pretty interesting texture and color to your landscape so one of my all-time favorite shrubs oak leaf hydrangeas this one's a really solid shrub the texture on these things even when they don't have flowers is just incredible um, they really do pop out especially if you have them in the shade. But these ones are a large shrub uh, growing from 10 to 12 feet tall and wide. Uh, they make these really beautiful white flowers in May to June, which then they kind of dry into a pinkish brown throughout the late summer into the fall. But they make a really good framework or backdrop for any landscape design. Um, they probably like full sun for most optimal flowering, but they do grow in part shade. Uh, if you grow them in full shade, they do get a little leggy though. So one of our native azaleas are called Piedmont azaleas, and they grow from zone six to nine, generally are between six to 10 feet tall and wide. And they bloom in usually April in the spring. Um, usually they're multi-stem and they make these beautiful pinkish orange flowers on them. For best flowering, they do well in full sun, but they can take shade as well. Another one of my favorite grasses are Northern Sea Oat, also called Fish on a Pole, which is one of my favorite plant names ever. Uh, but they get about two to five feet tall. And this one's a really cool one adds a really cool texture especially with the seeds as they set later in the summer to the fall. A note with this one though they will slowly spread and take over a place and they're really hard to remove once they're in there but they work really well for erosion control because of their pretty tight woven roots that they have in the soil but overall it creates a really fascinating texture and I think it's probably one of the coolest looking grasses you can have. Moving on to some perennials next up is yarrow. And yarrow is probably one of my favorite flowers. It has such an interesting flower structure to it. Uh, but you can get these almost in any color at nurseries. I believe the wild one's usually white or yellow. Uh, but they grow from zones three to nine. Uh, they're kind of semi-evergreen. Their, their leaves will stay throughout the winter. But they usually get about two feet tall, maybe upwards of three feet tall. But they bloom typically in the early summer. But if you deadhead them, they can produce blooms throughout the year. One of my favorite little irises is dwarf crest iris and this is a really cool iris that's native to the eastern half of the u.s uh, but they grow from zones four to nine and they're really short only four to eight inches tall and about a foot spread uh, but these ones work pretty well as a mass planting along a border uh, they produce those same little purple iris flowers up there along the ground so this one's more of a, a native ground cover that is naturally found along moist stream bank so that's a really cool iris that you can use and one of my favorite natives is golden ragwort and this guy blooms in the spring with these beautiful yellow flowers on it um, it's in the aster family but this guy's really cool it does spread pretty quickly if you let it um, but they're not they're pretty easy to control to you can pull them out as needed a golden ragwort makes an excellent mass planting to really have a showstopper during the spring season. It kind of blooms from March to April and starts fading out by May. Uh, but this one's a really showstopper. It looks really good during that those couple weeks in the spring. And then the rest of the year, it's it's okay as a ground cover with their little rounded green leaves along the base. It's a, a really awesome plant that you can use in shady spots. Next up is bee balm and wild bergamot, which is the native variety of it. But these ones are a really cool flower. Um, very interesting shape to them. Usually anywhere from pink to red to purple, depending on what variety you get. Uh, but they grow from zones three to nine. Uh, but these guys are a favorite of hummingbirds, a uh, great pollinator source, and overall are pretty fascinating. They're one of my favorites. Generally they bloom during the early summer and then they'll start fading out towards the end. Uh, but a really awesome native flower that you can use. 
course, it's not a native plant list unless we talk about some milkweeds. One of my favorite milkweeds we'll talk about in this video is butterfly milkweed. It uh, grows from zones 3 to 9. It's a shorter milkweed than some of the other ones, but produces these really cool orange flowers. And again, this is a great resource for monarchs to use. Uh, but it blooms throughout the summer months, quite stunning with their bright orange flowers. It's definitely one of my favorite milkweed species. One of my favorite native poppy species is celadine poppy. It produces really cool uh, yellow flowers during the spring months. It's not very tall, usually between one to two feet tall. Uh, but this one works really well in a mass planting in a woodland or a shady garden setting. Really great ground cover. The deer do sometimes go for it, but if you deer spray it or have any other methods of keeping deer away, it works very well as a ground cover during the spring month. And then it'll kind of die back as it gets warmer, but they'll always come up every year. Uh, but that's a really cool poppy species that I recommend. And one of the all-time classics and dependable native plants is Black-Eyed Susan. There's a couple different varieties you can use. Some of my favorite are Re Rebecca Hertia or Rebecca Goldsturm. And both of those work very well. Typically they grow from three to five feet tall, depending on the variety. I and mean, they do slowly spread over time, but they produce these beautiful yellowish orange flowers on them. Typically they'll start blooming towards the latter end of summer into the fall. They're a great, beautiful focal point that you can have in your garden space. Uh, they work very well in mass plantings as well. Produce a very strong and bold statement, and they're one I definitely highly recommend using. And I use them a lot when I'm doing landscape designs as well. And the last one we're going to talk about today is Coreopsis. Uh, one that I use a lot is Lance Leaf Coreopsis. This is a great ground cover. Uh, similar to Golden Ragwort, it brings up these beautiful yellowish orange flowers in the spring, typically around April to May. And they, th this one's a really full one, uh, but this one blooms really good. Works very well as a mass planting or a border planting. And then during the rest of the year, it's typically just ground cover with its green leaves, which still don't look too bad. But that's one I definitely recommend using is Coreopsis. That is all the native plants I'm gonna go over today. Hopefully this kind of list type video wasn't too boring for y'all. But if there's any of these plants that you want me to dive into a little bit deeper or any ideas of uh, videos that you would like to see from me, please leave them down in the comments. I'm uh, definitely more than willing to explore some of these ideas and hopefully we can build a great community here. Thank you all for the recent support as well. Our last video, I think, did over 20,000 views and so that's really awesome. Uh, so thank you all for subscribing and watching the channel and hopefully I can continue to improve my video editing skills and to continue to provide you the best information and content out there I can regarding landscaping and horticulture in general. Uh, but with that being said, I think that's going to be it for this video. Feel free to subscribe so you can be notified of our next video. But we put out a video every Saturday at 9 a.m. Look forward to our videos every Saturday. And with that, I hope you all have a wonderful day and go buy some native plants from your local nurseries.